Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue back with some of the top stocks I'm watching for 2024. I'll explain why I like these stocks, but Nation, understand, nobody has a time machine. Nobody knows the future. The best thing you can do when picking your stocks is do that fundamental analysis we do here on the channel and try to think through how the current trends are gonna affect a group of stocks. And I know it can be easy to second guess the stocks you bought or the ones you didn't buy, but unless you do have that time machine, there's nothing that beats good analysis. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we did have a time machine though? If we did, if we did, if we did. Hey Bowtie Nation, Happy New Year, and for one, I am damn glad just to survive 2024 and be done with it, am I right? I mean, who would have guessed that NASA beaming Beatles music into space would have brought a race of giant Rangos to enslave us all? But there were some equally giant news stories that drove stocks higher. Some of the top stocks I was watching when we started 2024, like when the AI deepfake Amma McLovin was named a presidential candidate. The fake AI character was initially supposed to be a hoax, but immediately shot up in the polls against both President Biden and Trump. Americans rushed to vote in the highest turnout in history, and McLovin became the 47th president of the United States. Of course, that reality of what AI can do caused cybersecurity stocks to boom as well. The problem for investors, though, has always been that stocks in this group trade so expensively on those multi-year growth. Here, I've copied some of the stats on the four major cybersecurity stocks. Palo Alto Networks, ticker PANW, Fortinet, FTNT, CrowdStrike, CRWD, and Zscaler, ticker ZS. You can see that all grew revenue by strong double digits in 2023, and were expected to post even higher growth in 2024. But the price to sales ratio, so that dollar share price for every dollar in revenue investors were paying, is up in the nosebleed sections for growth. By comparison, even growth stock Tesla only trades for nine times its revenue. Fortinet, with its slower growth, does trade around that 9x level, but faster growing CrowdStrike and Zscaler trade twice as expensive. But we know how important these cybersecurity companies are, with spending expected to rise by a 15% annual pace to $458.9 billion in the three years through 2025. Now, as a value investor, it's hard to overlook Fortinet, ticker FTNT, as one of the best deals in the group. More more than two thirds of sales are in network security, where the company sees stronger growth ahead, and it's got good product lines across all three business segments, networking, operations, and SASE. Fortinet fell behind Palo Alto in growth last year, but has the best profitability by far, and the second best deal on a priced multiple to that growth basis. Being the second largest company in the space means Fortinet can push economies of scale to help it grow and be profitable. It's twice as profitable as Palo Alto on an operating margin basis, and well above the pure average for cybersecurity companies. And Fortinet is not only benefiting from the rise of AI through increased security demand, but also implementing its own AI into products to instantly detect it and then mitigate threats at a reduced cost. Billion in revenue growth slipped in 2023, but is expected to rebound in 2024, and that slip up makes for a great value play on a growing theme. Another favorite here, I first recommended Zscaler in 2019 at just under $50 a share, but got scared out and sold at 190 in 2021. But I like the stock again on its disruptive approach to cybersecurity. Zscaler changed legacy cybersecurity from a network and firewall architecture to a zero trust model in the cloud. And that first mover disruption accounts for its amazing revenue growth. Sales grew by 54% annualized rate in the three years through 2023. It now serves 40% of the companies in that Fortune 500 list and is a market leader across business groups. Now, while the company still reports a gap operating loss of 9%, it's actually profitable on a non-gap basis, and that accounting loss is on aggressive spending for growth. Zscaler spends 45% of its revenue on marketing and 14% on research. In fact, the company kind of reminds me of Amazon, where for years Amazon was unprofitable because it spent so much on growth and R&D, but kept up that sales growth pace and has made it a trillion dollar company. We've still got more of those top stocks for 2024 to highlight, but our long-term forever stocks had another great year. I created a free report highlighting the stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks two years ago. These are the stocks in major multi-year trends, and the group was up 94% in 2023, but I'm holding on for even more returns. If you want to see that report, click through the link I'll leave in the description below. It's totally free. You're going to see that first stock immediately, and then Motley Fool will email you the next four. It's an easy way to support the Let's Talk Money community and see some of my favorite long-term stocks to buy, so look for that link below. 2024 was also the year that Eat the Rich took on a new horrifying meaning. I mean, it's been a mantra for decades, but San Francisco took it to a whole new level when the city implemented a one-day wealth hunt to fight the city's homeless situation, kind of a literal Hunger Games. The plunge in sales hit luxury goods makers, and in a perverse twist, 
sales of Dollar General, ticker DG, surged as millionaires started shopping there to conceal their riches. Now, Dollar General was actually the third worst stock in the S&P 500 index in 2023, but this is a stable cash flows company with a strong market share position. Now, much of that sell-off was on plunging profitability. You can see here the operating margin dropped to just 7% by the beginning of 2024, down more than 3% from a peak of 10.5% during the pandemic. You see, surging inflation hit DG harder than most retailers because its product prices are pegged to that dollar. Products at the store aren't just a dollar anymore, but still, it has a harder time raising the prices than other retailers, in, and that profitability has taken a hit. At the beginning of 2024, the price to sales has dropped to just 0.77 times, half of where the valuation was in the previous years, and that P.E. ratio is at a 32% discount to its multi-year average. A slowing inflation does mean Dollar General should be able to lift prices a little and improve its profitability. The valuation has hit a bottom here, and the stock should do well on that turnaround. And who would have thought last year that the war would wage between Biden and Fed Chair Powell, with President Biden eventually triple-dog daring the central banker? I triple-dog dare you! And then for Powell to actually do it, cutting the Fed funds rate from over 5% to nearly 3% in a year. Now, a key theme I was talking about at the end of 2023 was how falling interest rates would boost real estate stocks in 2024. Shares of real estate stocks fell 25% in 2022 and just barely rose in 2023 as surging interest rates destroyed those property valuations and the cash flows. But investors forgot that after a similar 2008 crash, REITs went on to be some of the best investments over the next few years, more than doubling your money in the next six years. So as real estate bottomed out in 2023, I loaded up on stocks like WP Carry, ticker WPC for that rebound, and its 5.3% dividend. WPC is a $17 billion REIT with great diversification by its property type. In fact, pretty evenly spread across industrial, warehouse, office, and retail space. Most of the portfolio is in the United States, though it does hold just over 35% of its properties in Europe, which gives it great geographical diversification as well. And it's that diversification is really why I like WPC as one of my favorite dividend REITs to start a portfolio. Against other real estate stocks I follow, only WP Carry has that exposure to different property types as well as geography that I believe can really bring the risk down in your portfolio. The company collects over $1.1 billion in annualized base rent and books 98% occupancy over 131 million square feet across more than 1,100 properties. Now, obviously, the office side of the portfolio has dragged the shares lower over the last year, but there's enough diversification here that evens out the overall price performance. All you out there in the nation know, I held on to my shares of Medical Properties Trust, ticker MPW, throughout that 2023 sell-off, starting my position in March of 2023 and buying into average my cost down. MPW is the second largest owner of hospitals in the world with over 442 properties and rare international exposure for a REIT operating in 34 U.S. states and nine countries. It's about 60% of the portfolio in the U.S., but also 22% in the U.K. and throughout Europe. Of course, the shares were an absolute dog for two years, and it wasn't just the healthcare or interest rate story. Management continues to go all in on the company's two biggest tenants, extending loans and taking equity investments in the hospitals. Now, it has meant a free fall in the shares, but we started to see an improvement in hospital profitability late 2023, and as MPW was the biggest loser in healthcare REITs on the way down, I think it's going to be the biggest winner on the way up when those interest rates start to come back down. Of course, everyone went wild over the new shows on Netflix, building off its Squid Game success and emerging virtual reality. The streaming service created YouTube, that court case is still pending, of course, but where people strapped on their VR headsets to carry out their own dramas which was then streamed as reality shows to Netflix for billions of views. Now, why I was watching Netflix stock before 2024 is because it already had a strong advantage over those other streaming services and studios in its foreign-produced content. This is something I was watching last year during the actors and writers strikes. Netflix has found a massive following for everything from South Korean K-dramas to Latin American-made teen shows, all able to sidestep those sky-high costs other studios have to pay for working in the U.S. It's a big part of the reason Netflix can sport a profit margin of 13.8%, while competitors like Warner Brothers and Paramount Global both post negative profits. Netflix had already found a way to lower its production costs and now is lowering them further and raking in that cash. Now, I took advantage of the January sell-off to add more shares of Netflix, ticker NFLX, on that same streaming theme. And besides the major cost advantage it has over the other streaming services, just anecdotally, we tried seven streaming services and have canceled all of them except Disney Plus and Netflix. 
Disney we could probably live without if I weren't such a Marvel and Star Wars nerd, but Netflix consistently puts up the shows that we watch every single week. Despite its size, Netflix still puts up some impressive growth with international subscribers jumping 15% in 2023 on its password sharing crackdown. Even North American growth returned, topping 77 million subs in Canada and the US. That means it dwarfs all other competitors. And with Marvel kind of sucking lately, it's doubtful Disney is going to catch up like many thought. The rise in AI and virtualization also boosted shares of Unity Software, a market leader in 3D and virtual software. Unity offers a platform developers can use to create real-time 3D content and worlds, something that is already being used in gaming, but could explode with the development of the VR theme. Unity software could be the foundation on which that virtual reality and augmented reality worlds are built. And like that cybersecurity theme though, the stock isn't cheap at 7.5 times on a price to sales basis, but multi-year growth should continue to take this one higher. Although some great stocks there for 2024. I only wish I had bought more. Bought more, bought more, wish I had bought more. <laughs> that would be a crazy 2024. And funny enough, I do like all those stocks, even if everything doesn't come out just like that. Breaking news. This just in. Apple McLovin has thrown his hat into the presidential race. Look for the link below to see my forever stocks, up an average 94% last year alone. Or click on the video to the right for the seven best dividend stocks for 2024, dividend cash flow, and price returns. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.